had a good question from a Storyline user today in the Articulate community. She was asking, how do I create a menu with four items, but I only want the first item to be active at first. And then when the learner completes that first section of the course, then the second menu item becomes active and so on. So they kind of have to complete things in order. Well, here's one way that you can do that. I've got this course set up here with a menu slide at the top. And then I've got different sections. You can see each section I've created um, with a different background color just so that it's real easy to see which one is which. And on this first slide, the menu slide, if we jump here, um, I've got these four buttons with a trigger set up you know, to jump to the particular section that the learner is interested in. Um, but you'll notice that the section two, three, and four buttons are grayed out. And that's because um, what I've done here is set their initial state to disabled. Okay, so down here in the States panel, you can choose Disabled. This defaults to Normal, but you can set it to Disabled. And then you can also change the appearance of that disabled state. I just made mine you know, look grayed out so it would be real clear to the learner uh, that they wouldn't be able to click on that. And then what I did is I set up a variable for each section of the course. So if we jump over here and click on the X to open up our project variables, I've got a separate variable for each section. They're all true false variables and all of them are set to an initial value of false. And the way that you can create these variables is real easy. You just click on this create a new variable button. You can call it whatever you want. I named mine, you know, kind of intuitively like section one complete, section two complete and so on. And then the type of variable would be true false and then you would set it to an initial value of false. So that's how you can create those. And then what you'll do is at the end of each section, you can tell Storyline to flip the value of that variable um, to true. So on the end of my first branch here, the final slide in section one, you can see over here I've got this trigger that sets that uh, variable related to section one to a value of true when the learner arrives at this slide or when the timeline starts. So this is also really easy. You just create a new trigger and on the trigger wizard you can say what you want to have happen so the action is adjust a variable the variable is this first one called section one complete and we want to change that to a value of true when the timeline starts on this slide so that's how you can set that up and i did something similar on the uh, last slide in each section so each of these final slides have a similar trigger and then back here on the menu I also added a trigger to change the state of those remaining buttons to a state of normal when the timeline starts if the um, previous section is complete. So for example, here's the one for the second button. So I've said to change the state of button two to normal when the timeline of this slide starts, but only on this condition. The condition is the first section has to be finished, or in other words, section one complete, that variable that we created earlier, has to now be equal to true. And so what happens is um, once you've set up those triggers for each of those buttons, we'll just go ahead and preview this slide so you can take a look. What happens is when you return to the menu, these buttons become active. So right now only this first section is active. I can't even click on these other ones because they're disabled. But if I click on section one, I jump to my section one slides, there's only a couple here. I'll click next and then I've got this button to go back to the menu and when I return back to the menu you can see that now section two is available to me section three and four aren't but now that I've completed you know the first section section two is now available so I'll click that we'll go to section two we'll complete that go back to the menu now section three is available we'll click that we'll complete section three and now section four is available and we can complete that so now all of the um, buttons are active. And down here, this is just a reference to the variables. I inserted this just so that I could see um, you know, what's happening behind the scenes, just so I could monitor whether the variables are flipping from false to true as I intended. So I'll go ahead and attach this file to a forum post. And um, if that's helpful to you, you can uh, deconstruct and perhaps replicate the same approach in your project.